wow, you come here so often, I should just give you a set of keys. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot. And this is Wednesday. It is August 2nd. Now that means tomorrow's Thursday. I almost forgot about that. I've got a live streaming event I do every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. When the market bell is going off, I'm going on. Me and my lovely co-host, Taylor, we're there for about an hour to talk to other investors about stocks they're interested in. You got a ticker you want me to take a look at? Just come on in. Drop it in the comment section. Me and Taylor will go over the information in the charts and we'll give you our opinions on it. Now, if you want to make sure your ticker gets looked at, because here recently I haven't had enough time to get to all of them. It happens. Best thing you can do is get there early. I actually put up a placeholder at about 2.30 in the afternoon, and you can leave a comment then. So when I get there at 3.55, I'll see your ticker, and it'll be first in the queue. That is 4 o'clock Thursday, Eastern Standard Time. Now, in this show, we like to hunt every day for hot penny stocks. Stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. And I do my research by looking at the charts first. I'm looking for charts that have heat. When I find a chart that has heat, then I go looking for that press release or the filing to get it to move. Outside of that, I really don't pay attention to the news because hot news can fall flat on its face on a cold chart. Hot charts is where it's at as far as I'm concerned. Well, I've got three stocks I'm going to share with you now, which coincidentally, and I did not plan this, are all pharmaceutical companies in the research and development stage. They're all working with cancer drugs or other sort of drugs for neurodegenerative diseases. But here's the great part. They've all got hot charts. They've all got hot catalysts and none of the catalysts have anything to do with drugs. <laughs> I'm excited. That means I can avoid having to tongue tie myself trying to read all that technical jargon about their medicine and trying to explain it to you. So this is going to be a walk in the park. <laughs> so let's jump on into this. First one we're going to take a look at is lease, ticker L-E-A-S, Strategic Asset Leasing. Now the chart is hot. It is turning up the heat, but it's already broke out. Oh my God. It broke out on June 6th. And in two days, it went up 700%. Incredible. Now, she gave back a lot of that, but she kept some of it too. She has been bouncing uphill, and now she's turning on the heat again. Now, to be completely honest, I don't have any fresh catalysts. What got it running on June 6th is what we're going to look at. But it isn't a done and cut piece of news. It is a progress. So I think it's still worth looking at LEAS. So she finished a day at 0038 with just a little over 15% gains. She is on the pink tier, she's current, and she's got those two green ticks we're always talking about. This is validated information. You don't get validated information with pinks. Even their financials is just a disclosure. Management just gives you numbers. We gotta take management's word for everything. But this information, it's validated behind the scenes by an unbiased third party the otcmarkets.com website. It's one of their jobs. So it's good to see some validated information with the pink. So they give us some information over here about the company, but it's not about what they do. We know they're a biotech, biopharmaceutical company. They tell us here that their name is A New Medical. They say they've been waiting over a year for Fiener to approve a name change and the reverse merger with strategic asset leasing. So this name and ticker should be changing here soon. And with the news we're going to look at, I would expect that to happen soon. So what was the relative volume around the company today? We had a little drop. She went from about 12 million shares a day down to 11 and a half million shares today. It's not a big drop, but I would like to see it climbing instead of falling. Share structure for the company, oh boy, not good. Outstanding share count, just a little over a billion. The float, eh, just a little bit over a billion. <laughs> Insiders have about 5.3 million and we get all the rest. Now, I'm really not worried about that for a day trade. If you're catching a surge, that weight isn't going to slow it down. Now, obviously, a lighter load, a small float would help. You got to be concerned about these big floats when you're getting into a stock for a long hold. 
you're getting very slim slices of pie. You're not getting much. But when you're in it for a day trade, it really isn't that big of a deal. But as I said, we do prefer low floats. Financials for the company. <clears throat> we got nothing. As I said, it is a research and development company. They're not making any money yet. They're still looking for that home run. They've got drugs in phase one, phase two, and phase three trials, and that can take anywhere from five to eight years to get through. But as I said, none of the catalysts that we're looking at for any of these companies have anything to do with drugs. Disclosures for the company. We got nothing here since 2022. So let's just bounce on into that news. So I have jumped back here to October 4th so that you can get an idea of what this new company is doing. A new medical acquires five drug approvals with manufacturing in Europe. Well, that sounds like they're on the cusp of making money. The drugs are approved and they got manufacturing over there. So that's good news. I have not read it. You may want to. Next piece of news came out in December. The company acquires worldwide license to treat neurodegenerative diseases using a longevity protein and gene therapy program. Well, they've gotten a license now. That means they're permitted to do it. That's another way to make money. Definitely worth more due diligence. The company receives notifications of issuance of Alzheimer's gene therapy patent and claims by the European Patent Organization. They are protecting their technology and it's being recognized as legitimate or it wouldn't be patented. So this is looking very, very good. Then you've got the big piece of news that did come out on June 6th. They tell us here that A New Medical Inc. and Redwoods Acquisition Corps entered into a definitive merger agreement. Redwoods Acquisition, ticker RWOD, is a SPAC, a special purpose acquisition company. They come onto the market with no business, no revenues, and they start selling shares at $10 a share. And they accumulate all this money in the bank. Then they go looking for a company to make a deal with. Somebody wants to uplist or a private company. And they make a deal with them. When that company comes on, they change the ticker and the SPAC gives them a whole bunch of money that they're investing into the company because now they're partners with them. And that's what's going on here. So they're closing the reverse merger and they are moving into a new merger. They tell us here that A New Medical, an early stage biotechnology company focused on developing disruptive new therapies to treat age-related neurodegenerative diseases, has entered into a definitive business combination agreement with Redwoods Acquisition Corps, ticker WOD. The pro forma enterprise value, the value of it before the deal closes, is combined of $94 million. $54 million cash is held in the trust count of Redwoods, which is subject to redemption by Redwoods stockholders. So if I'm doing the math here, that would leave $40 million for this company. A more detailed description of the transaction and terms are in a copy of the definitive merger agreement in a current form 8K. Now I went and read it. They've got information there, but the one piece of information that's missing is a closing date. It wasn't in the 8K and it's not here. So I don't know when this is expected to close. Now I'll tell you when you know it's imminent. When it's going to happen is when they file the S-4. The S-4 is when you create a new entity. It's, it's been given birth to. So when the S-4 comes out, we know it's happening. So that's what the big thing here is, is that if they can get this deal to go through, they're going to get, it looks like $40 million dollars. And that is going to be used to support them through the phase trials. These phase trials are not cheap, folks. It can cost $10, $20 million to get through these trials. And if you run out of money, that's it. You have to abandon your trial. And somebody else comes along and buys it up real cheap, and then they pick it up. So they're going to have money to complete their trials. And that's really important. So let's go take a look at the chart for LEAS. Yeah, she likes to get spunky every now and then. This is ticker L-E-A-S. This is Strategic Asset Leasing. Now, we're going to be doing all of our charting over here at Thinkorswim. This is a free trading platform I got when I signed up with TD Ameritrade, and that didn't cost me anything either. So, this is a six-month, four-hour view for lease. As you can see, she has been drooping, slowly falling for the last few months till she hit a low here of 003 at the beginning of May. 
She did start to push up. She was climbing, looked like she was about ready to break out. And then she got a serious nudge with that merger news with the SPAC. And she jumped here from triple zero seven up to double zero four eight. Folks, to make the math easy, just get rid of the zeros. Think of it as going from seven to 48. That is almost 700% run. She fell back down to these strong SMAs, went sideways, got over the 50 day SMA, fell back to it to test it, and now she's launching herself, floating on the nine day SMA. Things are looking strong. Volume has been continuous since June 6th. That wasn't hardly anything before that. Osculators, they're looking very good. All of them are pushing up right now, and we are in the overbought on the RSI, just over 70 right now. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. So our low over the last 20 days was 0015, and our high is 004, 250% run. She has been climbing. She's rolling along this way, but she is pushing up. She's bounced off her 50 and she is on that nine day SMA with all the other SMAs following suit. They're all right behind her. Osculators, we're rolling around a bit here, but you can see right now, everything is turned back up, including our RSI, which is up at 65. Five day, five minute. Well, there's no doubt that we're running up the hill there. You can see that. From our low here all the way up, she is just bouncing off of this trend line so easily. Doesn't look like she's coming down right now. Everything is above the 200 and pushing up. Osculators, well, they have bounced down just a wee bit for this last block right there. But outside of that, things look like they want to continue on. Now, there hasn't been any news or filings for a while. Something could come out which could really help. Uh, I don't know when they're going to close it. They bring that out. It would really help. What will really kick the price is if that S4 comes out. That is the bullet. That'll be bigger than actually closing the deal. L-E-A-S. You may need to keep it on your watch list for a while, but she's already climbing. Our next biotech penny stock comes from the NASDAQ. This is EQRX with the same name for the company, EQRX Inc. Now the chart, it is an atypical breakout chart that has broke out, did a rubber ball dip, and then took off again. What's a rubber ball dip? That's when it falls underneath the strong SMA like a rubber ball in water and then comes back to the surface and it just took off. The volume exploded these last two days because they had hot, hot news come out yesterday. EQRX finished today at $2.17 with almost 7.5% gains today. Now, we don't need to go into the description because you know what she is. She is a biotech pharmaceutical company that is in research and development, not making any money yet. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Holy cow, wow. I didn't know she jumped that much. I knew she had a lot of volume. She blasted off from 2.3 million as a 30 day average to over 63 million shares today. <laughs> Share structure for EQRX. Well, that's better than the last one. I don't know what the float is, but our outstanding share count is just under a half a billion at 487 million. And our float won't be any higher than that. Thank God. Financials, well, I already told you, they don't have anything coming in because they haven't got any drugs for sale yet. Looking at those disclosures, wow, we got a lot of them and look how many of them came out yesterday. That's because big news came out yesterday. And rather than jump into each one of these filings, we're just going to jump into the one news press. I've got two pieces of news here, the big one that came out yesterday and another one which really links into this one. This came out in May. The company resets to focus on clinically differentiated medicines, leveraging $1.3 billion cash position. And they reported their first quarter 2023 financial results, which were zero. 
The big deal here is, is that they've got $1.3 billion cash assets that they can use to push their drugs through the pipeline to get them through all of these trials, which is what I told you. Everybody needs money if they want to complete trials. Once these trials are finished, oh my God, that's going to seem like a little investment. They're going to make a lot of money on it. The big news that came out today, Revolution Medicines Inc. is to acquire EQRX Inc. in an all-stock transaction in a reverse merger, in a reverse takeover, which means Revolution Medicines is going to swallow up EQR and EQRX is going to fall off of the market. They will no longer be here and Revolution Medicines will be there in their place. They are doing this to get that $1 billion. They want that $1.3 billion to add on to their own pile of money to do what? Exactly what I said, to get these anti-cancer drugs, these Alzheimer drugs through the pipeline because once they get on market, they are going to be super rich. They tell us here that Revolution Medicines, a clinical stage oncology company developing targeted therapies for RAS addicted cancers and EQRX, Today announced a definitive agreement through which Revolution Medicine plans to acquire EQRX in an all-stock transaction intended to add more than $1 billion in net cash to Revolution Medicine's balance sheet. Of course, they're excited. This singular acquisition of a sizable quantum of capital signifies the growing confidence we have in our RAS-focused drug candidate pipeline and substantially increases our capacity to continue advancing high-performing oncology assets. Now down here, don't worry, I'm not going to read all this. It was difficult for me to read. What we basically have here is a statement of a dividend. That's the way I read it. And they're giving us a formula here how they're going to figure this out. But they don't give us just a basic ratio. So I don't know what it's going to be, but it sounds like once we get into this deal, as shareholders, we get a dividend. Because this company, RVMD, is on the market currently at $32.78. Now, I read back here that they were basing this price off of $26, right, <laughs> right there, $26. But you can see it's a more expensive stock. So that's the deal here. We've got another merger, a reverse takeover, increasing the pile of their capital so they can push the drugs through the pipeline and get these things on the market as fast as they can. Another hot chart, loving this chart. Let's go take a look at it. Come on, that's a luscious atypical breakout chart. This is ticker EQRX. This is a six month, four hour view. Six months ago, we had a high of $5.39. We had some huge drops and some long drawn out dips till we ended up at a low of $1.58 in May again. Now, as you can see, once that 200 day SMA got close, she started pushing towards it, breaking through it, but it was still too steep to get on. She got up on top of it here and had to lay down. She just laid on it because she didn't want to fall. And look what happened. Our 50-day SMA crossed the 200. That gave us a golden cross. That is a power technical. You get lots of strength from it. And she launched off of that from $1.83 up to $2.26. Then she took a big fall, a rubber ball fall, because she went underneath the 200 and then just jumped right up back on the top like a rubber ball going into the water and just coming back on surface. She had a huge jump going even to a new high of $2.34. She fell back about 50%, which is a good placement, and she started pushing up from there. Things are looking good considering all the volume that has come in over the last two days, with today being the absolute strongest day in a very, very long time. Osculators are super strong. PPO, percentage price oscillator, and the MACD are climbing up the mountain. Speaking of mountain, we got lots of green bars accumulating here, and our RSI is clear up at 66. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. So she was above the 200 and above the 50 when she hit this high of 225. Then we had that rubber ball fall down to $1.64, bouncing back up. When she fell back, she didn't even touch the 200. 
she was caught more by the nine day than she was the 200. That means the price isn't heavy. It's light. It wants to climb. So it's jumped onto this, this very thin nine day SMA and it's floating up. We have had a couple of red bars after market which is having a little bit of effect on the oscillators. They're all still in the hot zone, but they're cooling off just a tad. Looking at our five day, five minute. Wasn't much going on here for four days at the beginning of the week. You could see she was just hugging underneath the 200. Wasn't even trying to get out. Had a breakout three days ago, but didn't do anything with it. Had a tap here and jumped from $1.70 up to that 234 instantly. I don't know if that was pre-market or after market, but it happened very fast. And that's where she fell back 50%. And she pretty much with highs and lows, she just went sideways for about 24 hours. And then she started climbing more today. What does that look like? Maybe another rubber ball dip? Possibly, but probably not because she did not come to the surface here. She went back up underwater, which means she could dip. She could fall and see the roll on our 200. So this looks good to me. She has lots of volume. She's been climbing. Just the current charts say she's probably going to dip. So I would watch this first thing in the morning to see what's going on. But with all that crazy volume that came in in the last two days, you can't take your eyes off of it. Not just yet. One more biotech pharmaceutical to consider to fill out our triple play. This is Tracking Pharmaceuticals, ticker T-C-O-N, T-Con. Now, if you like that last chart, you're going to love this one. It is another atypical breakout chart that is primed to run. Now, she had big news back on the 11th, and that is the big news we're looking at. This company is just like the last two. She is a research and development company not making any revenues. But they need a lot of money to continue their trials if they want to get these drugs through the pipeline. Well, the news tells us how they're getting their money, and it's very unique. So Tcon, she finished the day at 37 cents, and she did have over 14% gains today. This is a hot penny stock on the NASDAQ. You already know what the company's up to, so let's take a look at that volume. Well, look at that. That's a nice explosion. Jumping from roughly 400,000 shares to 3.4 million shares today. Share structure for the company. Not a lot of information here, but enough. We don't know what the float is, but we know it's not higher than the outstanding share count, and that's only 24 million. So the float isn't going to be bad. Financials. Well, we're just wasting our time coming here. I told you, the research and development, they're always looking to get more money. They're not making any money yet. Disclosures for the company. All right, this pre-14A, which came out on 725, this is about a stockholder meeting. And then we've got an 8K that came out on 711. And that is important. That actually relates to a piece of news. But there is an older filing I need you to see that actually came out back in April. I've got that one right here for you. April 25th, this came out. Tracking Pharmaceuticals, a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company, today announced that the tribunal in the arbitration, arbitration against IMAB rendered an award to track on in the aggregate amount of approximately $23 million. The company sued IMAB for breach of contract. So this was one of their breaches. There was a second breach as well. So they tell us, among other findings, the ICC Tribunal deemed the certain drug trial complete as of January 2022, which entitled track on the $9 million plus interest, awarded legal fees, and cost to track on. So they've got $23 plus $9 million roughly. So you're looking at $32 million that they have coming in that has been awarded to them. Now let's jump into that news. Our first piece of news comes out June 15th. The company announces enforcement action to collect that binding arbitration award from IMAB Biopharma. The company doesn't want to pay them. They're having problems. In the meantime, they get some good news. The company announces positive results based on ongoing double-digit objective response rate for single agent, uh, their drug, in the phase two pivotal trials. I don't know what I read there, but I know it's good news, a drug they have in phase two. 
Then, the whole point. On 7-Eleven, Traken Pharmaceuticals announces the collection of the arbitration award. They finally got their money from them. Now, what I really want you to pay attention to was the date that filing came out, April 25th. Wouldn't you consider that good news? They were awarded $23 million and $9 million, two cases that they got $32 million from. When we look at the charts, nobody was happy with it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We are now looking at Trek in Pharmaceuticals, ticker TCON. This is a six-month, four-hour view. We got a high here at the end of March of $2.19. She was climbing a little bit, working her way up. And then we had this humongous fall, lots of volume. That was April 25th. That was the filing that came out that said they were awarded $32 million. Did everybody read it wrong? Did they think this company had to pay $32 million? I don't know. But it fell from $1.82 down to $0.62. Cents. You're talking like 66% drop. For what? I don't understand. And she wasn't done falling. She continued to fall for a few months here, hitting a low about a week ago of $0.26. Cents. And right now, you can see she is starting to work her way up. Now, the only thing we're missing here is my directional intentional spike. I would like to see one big green spike per pierce that 200 and come right back down to home. That would be brilliant because then I know she wants to climb. But I'm looking at the volume here. Look at how it's becoming a tsunami. The volume is getting very, very strong. She has broke over that 50-day SMA, floating on her 9-day SMA, creeping up underneath that 200. She's looking sweet. Oscillators look excellent. You couldn't ask for better oscillators. This is swooping up. MACD is swooping up. RSI is clear up at 73. If all of your oscillators are pushing up, you can't go wrong. 20-day, one-hour view. Look at that 200. Swooping down, leveling off, and now it's actually starting to push up. Volume, you can see, is getting stronger and stronger. She had a nice push off four days ago from underneath all the SMAs. Broke through the 50 and the 200 in one leap and just continued. Never looked back, never tapped the top of the 200, just kept ripping. And look at our SMAs. A perfect, nice, linear layout. Just the way you want them. Not too far spread, all evenly going up. Looks sweet. Osculators. Oh, nice climb on our PPO, our MACD. Our RSI has had a pullback, but I'm not worried about it. She's still at 61. Five day, five minute. Oh boy, that's luscious. Look at the 200 folks. You got to pay attention to that because that holds the whole weight of everything. She is climbing up strong now and we're nowhere near it. We are on top of our 50 day SMA, bouncing off of that over and over again. And all of these spikes coming through, as far as I'm concerned, that is bridge. That is pillars. It's support. It's holding up this 20 and 9 day as it keeps floating over it. Looking luscious to me, folks. Osculators, well, they're a bit bubbly and bobbly. Um, and they are a little weak right now. Whoa, look at that aftermarket right there. So she's bouncing on her 50. Tap, tap. All right, I'm going to think of this as another spike. I'm going to watch. You're going to watch. Everything is climbing up nice and even. It's looking beautiful. We've seen a ton of these already. If we just back up, see, we got one right there. We got one right there. Even go back further, all the way down the line. That's what I'm talking about. So this is a big one. I grant you, it is a big one. But the nine day is getting further away from the 50. I like what I see. It's worth watching, folks. Again, when you see volume coming in, you can't do anything without volume. You got to have that steady water flow. And we've got that liquidity. TCON just got her money. All three of these companies have now got money to support their phase trials, which means as soon as they have a piece of news that comes out that says we did well in this trial or that trial, you can expect a bounce, not growth. 
it will bounce and come back down. Maybe keep a little, but normally you just get bounces on good news until they get the drug on the market. And that's when you get those crazy surges. So I've given you three pharmaceutical companies here. If you're interested in their drugs, what it is they're doing, how far along they are in the pipelines, I've left you some DD. <laughs> You need to know too, folks, because if you get stuck holding a stock, don't you want to know what it was you were holding? Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.